Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Tuesday, the 31st of May. I'm Derek Clark. I'm joined this morning by Johnny McFarlane. How are we getting on, Johnny? Very good, Derek. I'm going to pull my mic in close so people can actually hear me. A uh, very professional start to the day. Um, but no, sun is shining, streaming through my windows here uh, in sunny canvas lang. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling positive for the day, despite the fact that... Um, Obviously, it's the end of the season, but at least we have the Scotland yeah. game to look forward to. And uh, unusually, you know, this international break, there is something s seriously uh, up for grabs there for Scotland. So I'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah, there certainly is. Um, before we talk all things football, folks, you can see the little icon uh, on your screen. It's our sponsor, the One Football app. It's totally free. Um, you can get it for your Android or iPhone device. You can see there. Um, what what you will get if, if you download it, you can get uh, keep up to date with all the latest from iBrox. Uh, there's Rangers review articles on there. You can look at fixture lists, results, uh, facts as well. Not only Rangers, of course, but you can keep abreast of all that's going on, not only in Scottish football but down south uh, and also further afield abroad as well. So it's a one football app. It's your one stop shop for all your footballing needs. And the good news is. Is absolutely free, so you don't need to pay a penny for it either. So that's it, the one football app. And as you can see on the little ticker bar down below, we've still got that great offer on the Rangers review site, just uh, six pounds for six months worth of content. Works out a pound a month. You pay your six pounds, and that just actually sorted for half a year. Just just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all de the details. Um, okay, Johnny, let's talk all things uh, Rangers. First of all, before uh, analysing some interesting comments from former Rangers boss uh, Graham Souness uh, on the Scotland-Ukraine game. Um, the Conor Goldson situation, I think that's going to come to a head very shortly indeed. He posted a message on his Instagram page uh, saying uh, it's a picture of him holding aloft the Scottish Cup trophy. To a 60 game season full of highs and lows and ending it with silverware days and nights that will stay with me forever um it looks like he is is heading down south johnny uh, under freedom of contract nottingham forest credited uh with reported interest in him uh, and i think it's uh yes it's one of the, the worst kept secrets really that he's going to leave at the end of his contract it looks like uh, perhaps today could come as soon as today yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of interest in Conor Goldson of that, there's no doubt. Um, it looked like a couple of weeks back, he was on his way to Turkey with Traz Bonspor, who I believed made a significant financial offer. Um, that hasn't panned out. Then uh, the, the, the scuttlebutt and the rumour mill was suggesting he was on his way to Bournemouth. And now it seems that Nottingham Forest have, have, have stolen a march. Now, Nottingham Forest are not coming out of nowhere here. This has been a club that's been linked with Conor Goldson for quite a long time. And uh, I would not be surprised, given they've just gone up to the Premier League, that he would be interested in a move there. Let's be honest, two-time European Cup winners, great history, big crowds, um, and I think a team that if you can help them re-establish themselves, you can awake. I think a sleeping giant is maybe a little bit strong, you know. Uh, but certainly a week a, a side that has been dormant for, for quite a long time. They yeah. are a, a, a sort of classic European club, given their history under Brian Clough. And I think Nottingham Forest would be an interesting move for him. That said, we know that he was based down in the down in the sort of south. So Bournemouth made a lot of sense because, you know, previously having played for Brighton, uh, you go down there and you're, you're back into an area that you know well. So... We'll see what happens, Derek. Uh, I'm not close to his camp, so I'm not no. sure exactly what's going on. But but that's the kind of the scuttlebutt that's going around at the moment as it stands. Yeah. What's clear is I don't think he's going to be at Rangers now. Listen, <laughs> you, you never rule anything out in football, you know. And and uh, but I would be shocked. I, I would be shocked if tomorrow Rangers announce that Conor Goldson signed an extension. I'd also, I should say, be absolutely delighted because I think Conor Goldson's been superb and he's someone that you would absolutely want to remain at Ibrox, in my view, given what he offers in terms of his Iron Man stamina, playing all those games, you know, barely missing a game, yeah. doesn't doesn't get suspended, organises the back four and has got a great ping with his right foot. So he's someone I think personally. 
I think Rangers should have offered more um, if it was possible. I don't know the ins and outs of how much he was demanding. Uh, I would have absolutely tried to to do a deal with Conor Goldson, but the ages are, I do understand, you know, you, you're potentially paying for someone into the downswing of their career um, and, and and perhaps that would have been difficult. Perhaps the wages were just were just not going to be possible. The thing is, and this is the truth, is that £50,000 a week is an enormous amount for Rangers and it's a peanuts pittance for the Premier League clubs. So, you know, make it that what you will. I don't think Nottingham Forest will be throwing around 50000 a week contracts uh, too readily, but I don't think they're going to be short of a bob or two given... The promotion in of itself is worth, I think, 170 million in year one, and then they've got the parachute payments if they go down. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't think they'll be having any financial problems in terms of offering a, the kind of contract that that a, a Connor Goldson type, whether it's him or not, uh, wouldn't t- would 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 turn down. Um, yeah. I think that's where we are, Derek. That's the realistic yeah. proposition. Is that it seems very unlikely that Conor Goldson is going to hang around. And, and Giovanni Van Bronker said that himself. He said, you know, it's a very small chance. Yeah. Um, An interesting but, uh, point from uh, Multiple Man 78. Uh, Goldson and Warrell back together in the Premier League. Uh, that, yeah. That'll be interesting to see how they get on, Johnny. Just, um, I, think that I don't think Conor Goldson will have any problems in the Premier League, Derek. Yeah. I think, um, obviously, the, the quality of player is going to be really high and you're, you're going up against Erling Haaland and people like that who are going to give you bother. And, Yes, he will be put under the microscope, but I think he's got enough quality um, that that he'll he'll hold his own. I, I'm surprised Aston Villa haven't come in from Derek because yeah. I think in in Mings at centre half, Aston Villa have got a real weak link there. I think Conor Goldson's a better player than him. Yes, so, so I'm surprised on a free they didn't they didn't just think pff, knows the club knows the um, uh, the coaching team. Seems ideal. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't just press the button on that, but perhaps they're setting their, their sights a little bit higher now. You look at the kind of quality that they're bringing in. Uh, players who have who who are who are been playing at a really high level in European yeah. football. I wonder if that's kind of the level that Aston Villa will be shooting for now because they are a seriously rich club uh, and Gerard's not going to hang about there. He's not going to accept 14th position finishes, is he? No, and I don't think the Aston Villa board will accept that either. Um, yeah. Just a nice comment from, from David Kerr here on Gold City. He gave my son a signed top and a Rangers badge and Rangers COVID mask top look. Yeah, you sort of hear that off the field that he is a, yeah. a top guy. I've seen some guys were getting their pictures taken with him on, on an aeroplane uh, yesterday as well, and he was more than happy to uh, pose for photographs and what have you. And I think, yeah, I think not only on the pitch, Johnny, but off the field, he's going to be a huge loss. Yeah. Um, he's a vice captain for a reason. I think he's very vocal in there. Um, we had it more so when there was no fans in the ground. You, you could hear him uh, orchestrating that defence, and it's going to be a, a huge void that Rangers will try and fill in the summer. It's not going to be easy. I know that people have been saying John Suter. I don't think John Suter is a like for like replacement, and you've got his injury problems to contend with. Touch wood that, that he steers clear of them. But um, yeah, it's, it's, well, Derek, can I just just come in on that? I, I think. Um... John Suter's a like for like replacement for the Conor Goldson that walked through the door, not the Conor yes, Goldson that's walking out the door. Yeah. And, and I think it'd be unfair for uh, you to expect John Suter, who's coming from Hearts, to, he's not played at the level that Conor Goldson had. You know, Conor Goldson yeah. had been at the Premier League in the Championship. Um, but now Conor Goldson's an established Europa League centre and a half who's played in a, in a European final, who's won a, a championship and a cup. And he's a different player now than he, he was when he, he came in from Brighton. There's no doubt about that. He's a much better player. Yeah. And I think you need to give John Suter the chance to develop and, and become better. And I think he will. I, I like John Suter a lot. I've been impressed by what I've seen of him. I've been impressed by reading the scouting reports that we, we, we had done by um, uh, by Stuart when he, when he came in for a guest. Um, but a freelance work for us, Football Stuart on Twitter. Yes. At dot. Um, and, and so, you know, I think Conor Goldson does, it's, it's going to be hard to replace, but but John Suter does fit the bill. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Before we touch on um, Graham Soonis, this is an interesting comment that's come in here, uh, Johnny, from Tony. 
Who do we make for the next vice captain? For him, it's uh, John Lundstrom. Uh, that's, that's an interesting one, of course. Um, is there any outstanding candidates that you, you would give it to? I mean, Stephen Davis, if he stays well, on, would he be one? Yeah, well, and that's what I would say. Depends on who's around. Is Alan McGregor going to be around? Is Stephen Davis going to be around? Yeah. I think um, if you've got James Tavernier, who's a captain that leads by example, uh, and, and I have to say, Tav is more vocal now than he than he was in previous years. But he's still not, he's not Richard Goff, you know? So yeah. I think if you've got a, a, a captain who primarily leads by example, then you want to have a demonstrative number two who's going to be giving it big licks on the pitch, organising, getting them rallied, you know, a real character. So you have to have a think about that and it'll be about having the right blend. And I think they did have the right blend with Tavernier and Goldson. Yeah. Um, I think football players are different than they were. I mean, I say this all the time on this pod, but, you know, they're different to what they were in the 1980s and the 1990s. It doesn't always work having that kind of overbearing leadership father figure type, you know? That, no. that, that is a relic of a bygone era. I don't think young people really respond to that kind of hectoring anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not young anymore, but I'm not old and I don't respond to the kind of a hectoring style of leadership. So <laughs> why should that be any different in in football? It's, it's not yeah. going to be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I, th I think it'll be interesting. If, if you push me, Derek, if you absolutely push me and you say, right, stop, stop havening and give me a bloody name, <laughs> then... I think I would probably say John Lundstrom's not a bad shout, yes. Yeah, yeah. But there's another... I, I, love, qu I yeah. love questions like this, and, and it's ideal for the, the close season, Johnny. Uh, just a hypothetical. Would you swap Bassey and Aribo um, for McGinn? <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, here's the thing, right? And I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but God, you know, it's it's it's, it's pre-season, it's pre post-season, pre-season, whatever you want to call it. And like, 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 I am not a big fan of John McGinn as a player. You're not, and a fan. I never have been. And 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 it's not. People think automatically that there's some sort of he's a Celtic fan or whatever or anything like that. It's not, it, 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 he seems like a great guy, right? It's not. It's not personal, right? <laughs> it's just his style of play for me. I like, I like a midfielder. I came through. As a, as a football fan during a certain era. So kind of Barry Ferguson, in a way, kind of shapes what I want from a midfielder. I'm looking for a tempo setter who takes the ball extremely comfortable on it in any situation and, and, and sets the heartbeat of the side. And for me, John McGinn's one of these players that he runs about a lot, but there's not a lot of finesse there, I don't think. There's not a lot of... Um, He's not taking the game by a scruff of the neck in the middle of the park and, and dictating what happens. I, I, from a Scotland point of view, I would still play John McGinn every game. Yeah. Um, but I would play him as a number 10 because to me, he's just too tactically indisciplined, too erratic, running about all over the place, just can't help himself. He's got some great attributes, you know, his backside, he's really, really good at holding the ball up. He's really, really good at, at fighting off people in close quarters. He's obviously very, very energetic, but he's just not my kind of player, mate. He's, he, I mean, yeah. and, and I, I literally accept anyone who comes to me and says, oh, he's terrific. And you, you look at his scoring record for Scotland, it is terrific, but I just find him a little bit... Put it this way, right? I don't think John McGinn would be particularly popular um, at the Italian style, and that's more how I see football. Yeah. So, so you know, Serie A... That kind of that kind of environment. I think he's more of a British style midfielder. And and listen, I'm not decrying that, and I'm not saying he's not a good player because I'm going to get myself in bother. I know this for a fact. But it, to, to me, I just I think he's a bit overrated, John McGinn. I've got to okay. be honest. I think he's massively overrated. But okay. what do I know? Yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be swapping a Rebo and Bassi for him. Put it that way. I think I think he's a, I think he's a he's a good player. Um, I was shocked when. Uh, Celtic never splashed the cash uh, when he was at Mirren to get him because it's yeah. Mirren he was he was a, a class act but there you go. Um, well, Hibs, he went to Hibs. Yeah, but I mean, again, when he was at Hibs, yeah, I mean, right I now. watched Andy Halliday dominate him in more than one game in the centre midfield, and that, that's no. I'm not trying to knock Andy Halliday. Yeah, Andy Halliday was a good player for Rangers who gave us all, but. It's like there's a there's a narrative that John McGinn was utterly dominant, and that that's I mean I watched all of those games, 
Yeah. In, in the championship, I was a season ticket holder at the time. And, uh, you know, there were games when McGinn was not effective. Yeah. Um, so, it, listen, he, he is a good player. Um, but, but, but Bassey, I, I think Bassey's got an enormous, an, an enormous ceiling. And if you're talking about Bassey and Aribo, I think Rangers should be pushing for 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 big bucks for those two. I mean, yeah. the thing is, with the English Premiership money, John McGinn probably go for sixty million quid, so oh, easy. probably would pop them for them. But I'm yeah. talking about on a pure playing, uh, playing point of view. Yeah, this leads us nicely on, Johnny. Um, <laughs> nice one, John. Just faced the boy to have a blender of a game versus Ukraine. Yeah, um, see, before we go in there, right? Just because, um, can I just sorry interrupt? Sorry, there was a there was a wee thing about Katic I wouldn't mind going into, mate. Yep. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to find the comment. Yeah. Um, well, there's people asking about Nico Katic. Yeah, there was. It's, it's worth going into that. Um, there was a story from journalist Mark McDougall, who I know is very close to Katic's camp. And he was basically saying that um, Katic would come back and get an opportunity in the summer under Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, which is what he wants. He doesn't want to remain in. Um, <clears throat> in Croatia, and I think yeah. he's had a pretty middling time of it out there, from what I can understand, in terms of his form. I think it'll be interesting to see how Giovanni Van Bronckhorst assesses Katic. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes, but he gets welcomed back in the folds. It might be that Giovanni Van Bronckhorst thinks Katic has something that you can do with in the Premier League and the Premiership, sorry, and. That to me is going to be one of the really interesting parts of of the season ahead. How is Nico Katic going to be used? Is he going to be used? I think he's. I think there's a player in there for the Premiership. Is, Whether is, or not he's got the ball distribution qualities yes. that Van Bronckhorst needs is another is another question entirely. Maybe in a back three, as Gary Gray points out here, that might be the role for him, but. Time will tell on that one. I think it's the one to watch out for in pre-season. Yeah, I think the distribution would be the thing for me, Johnny, that I would be uh, concerned about the most um, based on the, the way Rangers play. But listen, I think he deserves a chance at a pre-season to, to show what he can do and, and let Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and the coaching staff assess if he has the right tools to, to be part of the squad. But there's no doubt about it. He's, he's a fan's favourite. We all know this. Um, and it'd be good. It would be such a shame... Uh, to see to see an injury ruin his arrange his career, he wouldn't be the first and he won't be the last, of course. But um, yeah, I'd like to see him given a chance. But whether or not he's he's up to it is, remains to be seen. Um, let's move on then, Johnny, because of course um, Scotland are gearing up for their World Cup qualifier to play off against Ukraine. Winner plays Wales, of course. Uh, Graham Souness, the former Rangers boss, has come out with a, an interesting comment. He says he'd like uh, Ukraine to win. Uh, just based on obviously the, the horrible scenes over in the country just now, he says, part of me keeps coming back to the fact that it's just a game of football and do I really want to beat them? Whether it's sport, politics, the arts, whatever it is, we must send a message to Russia that it's not acceptable what they are doing. I'm going to find myself in a really difficult situation. I'll be emotional. I don't just want Ukraine to qualify. I want them to go there to Qatar and win it. Um, what do you make of these comments? It's sure to upset some, uh, Johnny. Uh, I can see where he's coming from, to be honest, but it's a tricky one for Scotland because they're put in this situation, uh, not by their own doing, of course, uh, and they're going to have to take on Ukraine. Um, where, where do you stand in all this? I can't agree with Graham Souness, which, um, you know... Uh, it's unfortunate because I, I do, as you say, understand where he's coming from with this. There's more important things in football. Ukraine getting to this uh, World Cup would put the smile on the faces of the Ukrainian people who have been through much more than we can possibly ever imagine. Yeah. And surely, I think the argument would go that that means something tangible to them. Whereas uh, in Scotland, you know, we, we have a, a, a cushy, cushy life in comparison. I mean, what ha what is happening over there is despicable, it's horrible. I know that the, the kind of news organisations have, have, have kind of dialed back a little bit of the coverage because people can only take so much, but there's still horrible things happening uh, in that yeah. region of the country where the Donbass is, some really, really disgusting things going on. And, and, and ultimately, you, although we're not seeing it 
every minute of the day as we were at the start of the conflict doesn't mean that it's not a, a really, really dangerous situation, not just for Ukraine, but for the entire world. All that being said, this is football, and international football is just about, you know, daft, harmless nationalism, um, if there is such a thing, uh, and supporting your country like you support your team. And uh, I don't think Scotland are in a position where they can start to take the moral high ground, given that they've not been to a World Cup since 1998. I have not seen Scotland qualify for a World Cup in my adult life. I was old enough, fortunately, in 1998 to sneak into a pub to watch the games and, and, and enjoy them. But anyone who is under 40 is not going to be able to say that. And I think that's actually a, a really important thing for football. And that applies to Rangers and every other club in the country as well for Scotland to be doing well, because if, if Scotland are doing well, then it does raise the the, the profile of the nation, it, it brings football into stark consciousness politically, and if politicians are kind of pressurised to improve facilities for young footballers, that's better for Rangers and better for every other club. Um, These things happen at a granular level, but then they become much more important as as they impact society and impact, uh, impact the zeitgeist. So I, I would personally love to see Scotland reach a World Cup. I think it'd be fantastic. It's Let's be honest, it's, I'm, I'm not going to use a swear word because YouTube's uh, going to start um, <laughs> affecting, it's going to start blocking us now. Um, but it, it, it's, a, it's a naff World Cup, isn't it, being in December? I mean, it's just, it's not right. It's, it's, it's about a it's nonsense. A joke, yeah. It's, as FIFA are as bad as UEFA. And it's yeah. a joke, and 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 it's going to be a very odd December for us covering Scottish football to be okay. Right, that's us. End of November. <laughs> Forget all tradition. <laughs> December, yeah. which is normally wall to wall football, it's a World Cup, and God knows, Derek, what we're going to be doing <laughs> at the Rangers Review over that period. We'll worry about that when we come to it. Yeah. Um. But I, I think. Uh, Ultimately, John, uh, sorry, AGSC is is absolutely right there. Um, yeah, you can need real support, not free access and free entry. Um, yeah. Soonest comments are well intentions, but show poor logic. I totally agree with that. I, I disagree with Graham Soonest, and uh, you know that's the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicely put. It's 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 going to be emotional, of course, at, at Hamden um, because of what's going on. Bigger issues going on. Uh, Aside from, from football, but I'm, I'm with you, Johnny. I think the, I can't get excited about this World Cup in Qatar. I just think the whole thing's an ap absolute sham. Um, everything about it just uh, it's, it just it goes against it. If your footballing heritage, beliefs, and what have you. So, uh, but yeah, uh, good luck to Scotland against Ukraine uh, coming up. Okay, folks, that'll do us there. Uh, thanks to everyone as ever. Uh, for interacting with the show. It is very much appreciated. Remember, that little ticker down below, we've still got that great offer on the site, just £6 for six months' worth of content. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. We'll be back again tomorrow morning, um, but until then, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.